Welcome to the OREA e-lectures. My name is Laura Burkhardt and today I have the pleasure to introduce you to the Northeastern Settlement at the Adatepe Gold Mine in Southeast Bulgaria. The Adatepe Mountain lies next to the modern village of Kromovgrad in the Eastern Rhodopes. And it offers a unique opportunity to examine one of the only archaeologically investigated prehistoric gold mines in Europe as well as accompanying settlement structures. The comprehensive area at the other table was excavated by Christo Popov and his team from the National Institute of Archaeology with Museum from the Bulgarian Academy of Science. The results presented here form part of my PhD thesis, which is embedded within a broader cooperation between the Bulgarian and Austrian Academy of Science. The Project Bronze Age Gold Road of the Balkans, Altepe Mining, is funded by the Austrian Science Fund and managed by Barbara Horisch. My PhD thesis, Die Funde der Goldbergwerkssiedlung vom Altepe Nordostquartier, Chronologie, Funktion und kulturelle Beziehungen in der späten Bronzezeit, was supervised by Barbara Horisch, Reiko Kraus and Christo Popov. The rescue excavations were necessary because the gold at Adatepe is being exploited again after over 3,000 years. The gold is embedded in quartz veins, which were followed down by the prehistoric miners in open cast mines. In a regional context, the Adatepe is not alone. In the whole region of the eastern Rhodopes, gold deposits primary in the rocks and secondary in the rivers are known. Besides mining structures and thick layers of waste heaps which stretched over all slopes, two settlements from the Late Bronze and Early Iron Age were found on Adatepe. And now I will take you to the northeastern slope. The settlement here was built around 1500 BC. Originally, there were more than 24 houses arranged in two rows along a terrace wall. If you are interested in the Stratigraphy, chronology, and first interpretations, I can recommend you the article by my colleagues. The similarity of the finds from the mining area and the structures supports the idea that the settlement was inhabited by the gold miners. This is further supported by the C14 model, which proves the simultaneousness of the settlement and the first mining activities, as well as a short occupation period of just 30 to 40 years. The main aims of my thesis were the development of a site-specific pottery typology, which is anchored by absolute dates to the first half of the 15th century, the reconstruction of daily practices of the gold miners, to examine the social organization of the miners, and to contextualize the role of the specialized miners within the local cultural historical framework of the Late Bronze Age and to gain a better understanding of the impact of the Adatepe gold mine on the socio-economic developments in the southeastern Balkans. In the following minutes, I will give you a brief overview over my results. Our project is using detailed material studies to gain insight into the prehistoric everyday life of the mine workers. Statistical analysis of the pottery form the basis of a functional interpretation. As such, it is necessary to study all morphological and technological aspects in detail. Based on stratigraphic studies and the C14 model, spatial analysis in combination with a functional analysis of the pottery and the finds assemblage will bring probable activity zones to light. For that, we used a database, which you can see here. The recording of the ceramic finds included the shape and condition of the fragments and technological characteristics. Although the material was quite heavily fragmented, nevertheless a description of the vessel shape was possible over the neck and shoulder area. Technological features used clay recipes and surface treatments formed the second column of our recording. Through the systematic observation, and description of the shirts, so-called fabric groups, could be defined, which later became a starting point for bathographic studies. 
In total, we recorded more than 3,600 characteristic fragments. Afterwards, they could be statistically evaluated. The wear spectrum of the pottery could be summarized by 27 fabric groups. The distribution of shapes and fabric groups suggests intentional choices of clay recipes for specific shapes. On the left, you see some examples of our fabric groups, and on some surfaces, you can see fine lines. They were incised using small and pointy instruments and later filled with a mostly white paste. You can compare this technique maybe to modern day tattooing. Especially the fine wares with a dark surface were decorated with this technique, which is very characteristic for the late Bronze Age in the Eastern Rhodopes. On these surfaces, these patterns are consistently forming geometric patterns. Here you see some examples of our pottery shapes, jars and amphora, shallow and deep bowls, canteroy or jugs. We also have some specific items for food preparation, like baking pans or pyraunoi. We can group them in functional groups. For storage, you would use amphoras and jars. For consuming goods, you would probably use um, deep and shallow bowls or cups and beaker. If we have a look on the distribution of vessel shapes, it becomes clear that jars and amphoras are the most frequent ones. Also, quite frequently, we found deep bowls. So with that, we already know that um, storing things was quite important for the inhabitants of the northeastern settlement. If you want to have some further information on the inventory from House 7, I can recommend the article by Barbara Horisch. Connections exist between a spatial use and spatial distribution patterns of finds. Since the distribution patterns are results of culturally determined deposition processes. Object clusters can, under certain conditions, reflect specific processes, as long as these are repetitive activities. With a contextualized spatial analysis of the pottery, divided by finds clusters within the households, and together with locations of small finds and stone tools, um, functional clusters and activity zones were reconstructed. Using contextualized spatial and functional analysis, information on daily activities, practices and strategies of the gold miners were obtained. Within some of the houses, different activity zones could be reconstructed, showing that certain houses had specific functions, for example, processing, preparing or storing food. The small finds and stone tools indicate that particular activities took place within the houses such as textile production or grinding crops or minerals. The miners' menu probably included stews of barley, pulses and meat, perhaps accompanied by sour bread. It's also possible that a porridge was made from millet and berries. For preparing it, they used baking pans, piranha and probably jars. Generally, the features showed comparable evidence of domestic crafts. The storage capacities would have probably been sufficient for a permanent settlement. The group of inhabitants was integrated into certain food supply networks as already processed grain was brought to site. And since we nearly lack gold objects from Alatepe, networks existed probably also for bringing the gold from the site away. The systematic and planned construction of the settlement layout, the settlement itself, and the quite massive terracing wall testifies the grade of organization of the group of miners. Together with comparative studies on late Bronze Age sites from the Rhodopes, the spatial and functional analysis enabled us 
to make interpretations about the organization and the socio-cultural context of the gold mining society at Adatepe. The house inventories all offered comparable assemblages. They did not reveal any luxury items or showed any indications of socio-economic differences within the group of the inhabitants. According to the range of small finds, it's unlikely that only a small group of selected specialists lived seasonally on Adatepe. We suggest that rather a well-organized group of people inhabited the site, which was capable of constructing a systematic planned settlement and a quite massive terracing wall. So far, there are no indications that the gold miners on Adatepe benefited on a grand scale from their work. We lack gold bridge graves or any signs of social stratification within the local groups. From the late Bronze Age onwards, there is a significant increase in the number of sites in the eastern Rhodopes. A hitherto unattractive settlement area was opened up. New forms of settlements, so-called hilltop settlements or sanctuaries, were developed. At the same time, we find indications for gold mining in the eastern Rhodopes. On a local level, the distribution of different vessel shapes and decoration systems of the encrusted wares point to various overlapping interaction zones within the Rhodopes. They connected the gold deposits of the central Rhodopes and the eastern Rhodopes with the region of the Aegean Sea and the Thracian Plain, indicated by the purple clouds on the map. Although these networks can only generally be dated to the Late Bronze Age, they indicate that within the mountainous landscape, societies maintain close contacts across mountain passes. And they suggest that goods such as gold or other raw materials were exchanged. Moreover, as these routes connect old mines and on these routes few late Bronze Age molds were found, it is likely that not only everyday practices but only also technological knowledge was shared and exchanged. On a super-regional level, Aegean imports on Adatepe are considered as direct contacts between the gold mining groups and Mediterranean groups. Thus, exchange relationships in the 15th century BC presumably worked simultaneously on different socio-economic levels, while regular interactions between groups in the Rhodopes can be traced even over mountain passes, where Aegean imports in present-day Bulgaria point to irregular exchange relationships with southern groups. Moreover, the position of the gold mine in the Rhodopes may have acted as an impetus for these long-distance connections. On Adatepe itself, only two very small gold objects were found. Interestingly, the small melting pearl matches the geochemical composition of the famous Valshitran hoard in northern Bulgaria. Therefore, we should, consider, we should consider the groups at Adatepe having contacts with various groups, not only to the south, but probably also to the north. Hopefully, further geochemical analysis on golden objects will shed light on economic networks on the late Bronze Age. Thank you for your attention. I hope you liked my little presentation. Follow our YouTube channel if it's so, and if you have questions or remarks, leave a comment and I am happy to answer you. Thank you and goodbye.